Many people think about epinephrine as a vasopressor, and it is at certain doses. However, some people don't know that at lower doses, it could be used as an anotrope. And that's what we're going to talk about today. At the end of the video, I'm going to give you the dose that you can use to make your epinephrine into an anotrope, not a vasopressor. Now, you know that epinephrine has both alpha and beta properties. The alpha properties are direct arterial vasoconstriction, and the beta properties has some vasoconstriction, but is mostly an anotrope. The interesting thing about epinephrine is that as you increase the dose of epinephrine, beta agonism goes down and the alpha agonism goes up. It's just an interesting property of epinephrine. If you keep the doses on the lower range, you'll get a lot more beta activity as compared to alpha activity, and this is what's going to give you anotropy. And where's anotropy helpful? When you have somebody who's in cardiogenic shock, if there's any RV or LV dysfunction. Now, epinephrine does have some side effects. It can increase your lactate. This is not from hypoperfusion or hypoxemia. It's due to a metabolic phenomenon. It can also increase your heart rate. And sometimes that can be helpful if you have somebody who is shocked with a disproportionate amount of heart rate and with uh, bradycardia. Remembering that cardiac output is heart rate times stroke volume, and you're maximizing your effect here with boluses and venous return. Don't forget about the heart rate, and epinephrine can actually increase the heart rate there. It can also increase arrhythmias, and so that can be bad. So what's this magical dose of epinephrine that gives you anotropy without a lot of vasoconstriction? The dose is 0 0.01 to 0 0.05 mics per kilogram. When you start this dose up on a person, you're getting anotropy. And it's very important when you hang this to tell your nurse at the bedside that you don't want this titrated. You're going to start a fixed dose and you're going to look for your change in cardiac output. And then any changes that need to be made, you'll come by and you'll make the changes, whether that's echo or swan gants or whatever invasive or non-invasive monitor that you have. But just remember this dose, it could be very helpful the next time you have someone who's in cardiogenic shock.